I think it's important to still speak about the events. There's a whole generation of people that weren't born when this happened. I think experiencing the political aftermath of the event, you know, I think it's important for people to know what the context is, what the true context of an event that might just be a blip on their, you know, in their history book, you know, to hear and feel what it was like to, to really be there. My name is John Serquera. I worked on the 81st floor of Tower One of the World Trade Center starting in June of 2001 up until September 11th, 2001. I grew up in North Carolina in Durham uh, from when I was seven. We moved from New Jersey and then in high school we moved to Cary. North Carolina, and shortly after went to NC State. Graduated in May and moved up to New York in June uh, for a job that was really just a, a way to get me to New York. Going to New York seemed like a rite of passage. It seemed like a, a next progression of being an adult, being a professional, experiencing a lot of what the world had to offer. There was this excitement and a feeling of upward trajectory and momentum. Uh, I was doing all the fun things that the city afforded me and even enjoying commuting to my office. The climate leading up to 9-11 was I would say marked by optimism. We were still kind of in that dot-com boom and there was that energy and New York was no different. I remember the night before 9-11 because the New York Giants were playing and they went into overtime. Uh, it was Monday Night Football. The game took longer than you would have thought. The 32-yard line, big play here for Greasy, who goes deep. morning of 9-11 was interesting in that weeks before that, the city was you know, in what I remember being kind of an oppressive heat wave. A lot of people, including myself, commuted to the you know, to their jobs with whatever they're gonna, they were going to wear that day on a hanger to get to their office and get ready. So I did that. That morning happened to be you know, the first day of, of really nice weather. It's cool and crisp and clear. Bright sunny skies, 65 degrees at 7 o'clock in the morning and sunny and pleasant for the rest of the day, 80 degrees. It's kind I of headed to the city on the subway from my apartment on the Upper East Side, showed up to the office a little, a little late, sat down, had my breakfast and then headed off to the bathroom to get ready and put on, you know, my shirt and tie and jacket to get ready for the day. This just in, you were looking at a, obviously a very disturbing live shot there. That is the World Trade Center, and we have unconfirmed reports this morning that a plane has crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. CNN Center right So now. when the first plane hit, a few coworkers and I were in the bathroom getting ready for the day. When it hit, it was jarring. It sounded and felt like a bomb. Tiles fly off the, the walls and feeling the building swaying, the immediate direction was that we should get in a doorway. But as we got to the doorway of the bathroom, we saw some fire in the hallway and the walls were starting to collapse in. From the office that we were brought to, from the floor fire marshal, we were told to stay there for a while, it seemed safe enough, and, uh, and that's where we were allowed to you know, use the office phones and try to call out. I was able to call my father, and the conversation was very brief, so I called him and said, hey, I'm in the building, I'm on the way out, and uh, he didn't give me any details, uh, I think just not to alarm me. He said, get off the phone, get out right now. We looked out the window and saw debris and what looked like articles of clothing. And the direction remained to stay where we were. That changed pretty abruptly because of the other plane hitting the other building. It, it, it does not appear that there's any kind of a, an effort up there yet. Now remember, oh my God. Oh my God. Right oh, now. there's another one, another plane just hit. 
Oh, right. oh my God! Oh. Another plane has just hit. It hit another From the 81st floor to the 67th floor, I remember moving pretty quickly. There weren't a lot of people in the office where we were on the 81st floor. My boss and I ran into each other on the 67th floor. I asked him what was going on and what the condition of our office was. Uh, he said it was completely destroyed and everybody in our office was already down the stairs. We began to head down and that's where we heard people in the hallway in the floor above us on 68. So we decided to go back up and help other people figure out that this stairwell was open. We happened upon an office for the Port Authority trying to get people to leave. We were able to get into the office and, and realize why they were all standing there. And, and it was because one of their coworkers was a wheelchair user uh, and had a you know, very heavy motorized wheelchair and they weren't quite sure what to do. She actually directed us to an emergency wheelchair that was in the office uh, because she was in that office during the original bombing in 1993. So they had already installed an emergency wheelchair that was a lot lighter. And then my boss and I left the, uh, the office with her and got back to the stairwell on the 68th floor. We were moving at a pretty slow pace, maybe a flight or two at a time, and then, and then we kind of stopped and rested. We knew that there was a fire that we were trying to outrun, but just we couldn't move any faster. We started seeing firefighters around the 40th to 45th floor. They were aware of what was going on, but to not alarm anybody, I suppose, we weren't really sharing a lot of the details. When we saw the firefighters, we could tell how exhausted they were, and just the look on their face was that something was serious. There was a, a change in tone when we saw them. I remember hearing some reports of something will collapse, but I just thought it was you know, maybe a floor a floor two or a wall would fall in or you know just something like you're on a construction site and you should be careful uh it never registered that the building you know entirely would collapse at the time where the second tower had collapsed. I remember commotion in our stairwell and the doors, the steel doors, you know, flapping back and forth like, like they were made of paper and debris coming in our stairwell and then the lights went out. Yeah, it looks like a big chunk of it has just peeled away. One can only hope that the area has been evacuated. The whole side has collapsed. The whole building has collapsed. The whole, the whole building has collapsed. The building has collapsed. That's the southern tower. You're when we got into the lobby, we saw that it was destroyed. You know, the doors were not working, so we just, you know, exited through a broken window. We put Tina in an ambulance that was waiting, and they sped away. And then we just surveyed the scene, just saw what was going on, and what we saw was ash, thick ash on the ground, thick and very light colored ash. It almost looked like snow. And we looked back at our building and next to the building was a Marriott Hotel. And we saw what looked like a piece of the facade, kind of a waffle looking piece of the facade, kind of impaling the top of the hotel. We kept hearing kind of this crashing sound. And as we looked up to the top of our building, we started seeing some debris floating down, some that was more dense, some that was lighter and floating. And, uh, and one piece of what I thought was debris caught my eye and uh, it ended up being one of the many people who were jumping off the building. I followed the view of a, what looked like a man as he got closer to the ground kind of fell behind uh, a building, so I couldn't, I did not see him make impact. I had a feeling of recognizing 
that a sound that I had heard that sounded violent enough was actually people ending their lives. Uh, it was it was a punch in the gut. That was that was the moment where the severity of the situation just all came rushing in. in Newark still open, though, again, heavily fortified. That's the latest now. We're going to continue to monitor these developments, particularly with the schools closing. The other tower, as you can see, yeah. seems to be collapsing, David, right. as, as we watch. Unbelievable. All of a sudden, we kind of started hearing like a waterfall sound. It's more like rushing, almost liquid. My boss and I realized that our building was peeling away. And we felt like we were right underneath it. We were maybe across the street, maybe a block away. We ran as far and as fast as we could. Running from the tower was an experience of running from something you really can't outrun. I jumped behind a van and uh, my boss jumped underneath a, a fire truck and waited for the debris to pass over. At one point felt like I couldn't breathe at all. That was the time where I felt like that was it. When you're facing that experience, there's a lot of kind of reconciling with mortality and, and prayer and sadness for loved ones who would have to mourn, and then really curiosity of what was gonna be next. The debris that was so thick that it was dark, it looked like it was dark as night, started to dissipate and it started getting gray and then a little lighter and so I got up and trying to yell for my boss so I finally found him and we grabbed onto each other and started heading uptown. The person I was eight o'clock in the morning on September 11th versus two o'clock in the afternoon, they could be characterized by where my priorities were. My focus was on you know, career and fun, and I don't think there was any other event that adjusted my priorities as quickly. I hope that people remember the day as an event that was not characterized or remembered by the fear we all felt or by the hate or the evil, rather that the tone of love and compassion, unity. For the first responders, their presence there that day, their memory of what they did, knowing for most of them that they were entering a building and, and were never gonna come out, that's not just heroic, that's a demonstration of almost a divinity. It's awe-inspiring and it represents the best of us. Love and relationships are the currency we should be operating in versus short-term or even long-term professional worldly goals. There's something bigger than we can all see and touch. And I've experienced that from the grace from being able to continue my life on earth, but also revealing how important relationships and love and just value of humanity is.